So the Niners re-signed hella players, starting with Kevin Givens, restricted free agent, interior pass rusher. So, I mean, he's an undersized defensive tackle, and you wouldn't think that he'd be good against the, the run. And he's not DJ Jones or Kinlar Armstead, but I think he's a hell of a player. He's been one of these guys that impressed me in one-on-one pass rush drills in training camp years ago and has steadily gotten better. And I'm glad that the Niners are sticking with him because I think he just might be able to become a starter if he can get a little bit stouter against the run. He's, I think he's a better pass rusher than DJ Jones. Mm. I really like Old. this guy. I really like this guy. I like it. It's it's yeah. depth. He was an undrafted free agent in, in 2019. He's still just 25 years old right now. Uh, he uh, appeared in, in 13 games over both of the last two seasons. His snap percentage is his uh, snap percentage went down a little bit last year from where it was in 2020 because there were significantly more injuries that gave him the run to, to, to make that uh, play. But to me, this is I wonder if the, the re-signing the one year deal for Kevin Givens and the other one that we're going to talk about in a, in a little bit with Maurice Hurst. My question is, does the depth re-signing here and the return of Javon Kinlaw mean that the 49ers are not going to make a play for DJ Jones in free agency? That would be concerning to me. I I think they're probably anticipating there being a market for Jones that they can't right. compete with, but I think they anticipated that last year too. I think they they were like, wow, we can get Jones on a one-year deal for $3 million? All right. Like, sorry you didn't get your, your big Mondo contract. Sorry we can't offer it to you, but – well, we love you. And I think they'll keep probably offering him a one year deal like, hey, if you got nothing better. But he, sh- if you're watching, someone should sign DJ Jones. He is yeah. a hell of a player. And I do think he can be a three down defensive line, uh, defensive lineman in a pinch. He actually is a pretty decent pass rusher. His My question with him is like durability and endurance. Like he's, he always flashes early in games and kind of wears, he's very big. But very big. Hell of a player, he deserves a three year, $30, $30 million contract at least, I think. That's rough on the lower body to be his size and his quickness, right? I mean, yeah. you get that sort of get off, and that's just an incredible amount of torque that you're putting through your lower limbs. Kinlaw doesn't have that. No. Not at all. DJ Jones, like, I, I forget who I was talking about this with the other day, but someone said, you know, Javon Kinlaw's never going to sack Kyler Murray. I think DJ Jones did. Yeah, and Russell Wilson. I mean, to yeah. run down those two quarterbacks and the initial burst he has off the line of scrimmage – Valuable, but I do think that the Kevin Givens is, is great depth there. It's just my fear is that with this news, the, it seems less likely the Niners return DJ Jones unless his market cools. Lynch and company will drag Jimmy Garoppolo trade saga to the deadline. We're about there, man. We're right yeah. about there. Monday about morning, there. 9 a.m. is when the tampering period opens. How many live streams are you guys doing today hoping to catch Jimmy trade news live? I'm planning on doing um, maybe two, one most likely, maybe two. I got something I got to do in the afternoon. I'm not talking about it, though. Got plans. Yeah, I did, I did just popped up. There was talk Fletcher Cox might be available if true and for the right pi- price. We pull that trigger. Fletcher Cox? For the right price? Sure. I mean, just ask. I would just be like, Chris, what do you want to do, Chris Coaster? Fletcher, right. what do you want? Just whatever you say, I'll do it. I trust you. Yeah, anybody Chris Co- Coasterick wants to bring in, get that man. Yeah, A plus signing, whatever they do. What about trying to bring in Cordell Patterson? I mean, on the one hand, you don't want to sign running backs ever. On the other hand, he's perfect for what the Niners are looking to do. But I feel like since Debo is, everyone wants Debo, everyone knows that's the closest thing to Debo, right? He's going to get a nice contract. He just showed that he could be a featured running back for a team. I don't think this. I don't think so. What I think is going to happen is I think Debo is going to be used even more as a running back. I was under the false impression that the, the the back half of the season from week nine on that Debo was the number one wide receiver and the number one running back in this offense. He was not. He was not. He was the th- number three option in the passing game from week nine on. And I don't know if you remember that because he was getting all these carries and he was, he was integral to them winning, but they were not using him as a receiver. That's going to keep going. The number one receiver after week nine was Brandon Ayuk. Then I mean, George- Kittle. Then, then Debo. Now, it was very close, and I think Kyle was basically trying to even it out, but that's how it worked out. So uh, Debo is going to – you could be better – you could wear that number 19, but you better get to love – learn to love the running back position. It's hard to believe that if Debo gets $20 million a year, that Corderell Patterson won't get some ancillary benefit of that and get a bigger contract since he's Debo light. 
Matt Beckel says Jimmy's a net negative. Can we see your Jimmy impersonation one more time? Niners first pick must be a corner. I'm going to pass on the, on the Jimmy impersonation. Not now. But I think, I think about, the Niners are going to pass on drafting a corner. I don't want to do it again. But Jimmy's a net negative. I, I've been trying to say that. Fool's gold, net negative. Like, I guess I felt that I needed to be a little nice because he's the quarterback of the team. And you can't just alienate the entire fan base. But now that he's out the door, I'm like, oh, let me say what I really feel. Let me tell you how I feel. If we offer Kinlaw for Henderson straight up, do you think Balky will do it? What is what's up with Henderson, man? CJ Henderson, whatever happened to him? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Hold on. Couldn't dude. tell you. I liked him when he came out of the draft. Let me see. Balky had warm things to say about the the Niners, specifically about the Yorks. Everything else he sort of hard passed on there at the combine, but uh, it, he he seemed to have softened a little bit in the way he came across. He was less gruff, still gruff, but less gruff. So CJ Henderson has been a complete freaking disaster. But so is Kinlaw. I mean, maybe I would do it. I would do it. Would Balky do it? I may. He might do it. I don't know. Hard to say if he'd do it. I don't think the Niners will do it unless they bring back DJ Jones. 